Hello, everybody. This is David Miles Huber, and you can find me at davidmileshuber.com. Uh, we're also doing a YouTube with water recording techniques. Um, today, I wanted to begin a discussion. I've been wanting to do videos along this line for a very, very long time. And so here goes. And I think the way I want to start off, I've been uh, teaching at the University of Washington, the UW here for uh, the fall quarter. And, uh, and we've been talking about a lot of things, but one of the things we've been talking about is microphone techniques. And as one of the authors of the book, Modern Rec MRT, Modern Recording Techniques, is the concept of what is modern recording techniques, that is capturing sound. Uh, in this case, I want to talk about microphones. And one of the things that really has just, it keeps hitting home to me more and more and more is the idea of when doing miking, most people think of, of recording as sticking the microphone just right in front of the person, having a, a cardioid mic and putting it right there and uh, maybe putting a pop filter on and that's it. There's no other option. That's how you record. And of course, it's one of the main ways that recording is being done. However, one of the, I've had the extreme luck of, uh, of w w going to school at the University of Surrey in England and, um, and w w doing classical recording techniques that, uh, this was a long time ago, but doing classical recording techniques, those techniques don't change. And, <clears throat> during orchestral recordings and also during summer breaks, I had a chance to record at uh, D Lane Lee, the music center in uh, Wembley outside of London. And uh, at the time, th the music center was the second largest studio in, uh, in the UK, the first one being Abbey Road. And actually the studio at, at, at the music center might've been larger than Abbey. Uh, so recording the London symphony for film was, not uncommon for us. And so that was, that was one of the experiences that I had. Um, also just, just, you know, as I started becoming and working my way out of becoming more of a engineer and more towards a musician and doing my own stuff, I had the added, ex added experience really of being able to do my own recordings. And one of the things that I, learned along the way is that idea of, first of all, for me, there's, it, it always sounds strange for me to say, but there are three people that do the kind of recording that I tend to do. Uh, and that is stereo recording. That was the late, great Bruce Swedeen, who did uh, all the recordings for uh, Mike, most of the recordings, almost all for uh, Michael Jackson. And then the uh, Alan Sides also is a major stereo uh, proponent. And I would almost always do X, Y, um, X, Y miking techniques, you know, check the book. Uh, it almost always recorded X, Y. And so my idea of, uh, of doing a, a recording, uh, did not, did not involve a single mic and did not involve a pan pot during mix. Um, still to this day, if I would pull up, uh, pull up my sessions, which can be quite intense sessions they are almost exclusively 99% um, stereo tracks, whether they're done as, you know, recorded from a synth, because I'm an electronic musician, recorded from a synth or a piece of gear, or recorded through microphones as X, Y. So that idea of stereo miking is something that, that, you know, just going beyond the idea of just thinking single dimensionally, that you stick the mic down somebody's throat and you hit record. Um, you know, this idea of creating, and, and again, getting back to that word dimensionally, that idea of, of spreading things out and making things a little bit larger. Uh, if you'd ever watch any of the Bruce Swedeen uh, videos, which they're out there of him talking about this, it's pretty amazing. Um, so that's one thing, the idea of stereo miking, which just adds dimension. Uh, again, like if I pull up one of my sessions, and has lots and lots of tracks, you will find that I do not pan. There's no panning. 
uh, it's all full left, right. The panning was done in the recording. So there's, so I, and I work in, uh, you'll see speakers in front of me right now, speakers behind. I work in immersive audio as well. Well, that's like one of my main loves. And, um, and so dealing with, uh, with that, it allows for that expansion of the sound field. Instead of being a localized sound field, maybe with artificial reverb, it's actually a spatial sound field, actually, as it was recorded. It changes things. So that's one thing. The other thing is there's a, uh, there's a saying that was in one of the magazines that really pops out to me. And it's like, how do you get that old Motown sound? And the answer was pull the mic back six to six inches to a foot or pull the mic back by a foot and boom, you have the Motown sound. Uh, and there's a lot of truth to that. The idea of miking, again, sticking the mic down somebody's throat, basically, and putting a pop filter on them is one way. Another way is having it in a, in a, in a good room or even a not so good room. And pulling back a bit, uh, and uh, and just allowing for a little bit of distance. Truth and advertising. This is where the, you, you know this is where the the studios that earn their keep, Capitol Records, East West, uh, Abbey Road, on and on. You know where the rooms are like oh my god themselves. So you pull back, and all of a sudden you start hearing the rooms, but you're hearing these these rooms, right? And so that's you know so so that idea of of, of just space, dimension, distance. And if you're doing a, you know, if you're doing a, uh, a film recording, you know, the last thing you're going to do is, uh, if you're recording a violin, the last thing you're going to do is put a microphone two inches off the violin. It would destroy the recording. So you'll often you to pull back like two meters, six feet or, or more, and double, double violins or four to a microphone or whatever. So all of a sudden you're pulled, pulled back. And so this idea of space, you know, I just, if there's, if there's one thing that I would like to impart is it's that, uh, and, um, you know, go in and cause, and uh, obviously I put these in uh, modern recording techniques, Emiliano and I have put that into a uh, MRT and just to keep getting the idea that you have more tools in your toolbox than you realize. Um, another thing, just as long, as long as we're on this topic, um, is the idea of reamping, which I think is really an amazing thing. You know, there's the idea of, 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 first of all, if you're, if you're, let's, let's, let's start from, the, let's start from the very beginning and work through one. If you're doing an overdub, for example, best case, if you're doing an overdub of a guitar, an electric guitar. So what you might do is you might take the, uh, you, you take the direct from the guitar. You might take a recording of the microphone from the, from the uh, guitar amp speakers. And then, and then, and so that's two different feeds to, to work with. And then you take an addition to that going back like two, again, two meters, uh, six feet in an X, Y stereo X, Y, uh, microphone configuration. And then you could go back and put in a large room, uh, or in, in any room, just go ahead and put mics further back and uh and record those often those room mics i will record in a bloom line a uh, crossed figure of eight that is a stereo figure of eight and so you have that you have the uh, xy you have all of those things and all of a sudden in a mix it's like especially if you're recording in a larger room we just re uh, re uh, recently did uh did recordings at london bridge studios which has a large room and did exactly that situation and uh, it's just so very, very cool. And so uh, uh, that's one thing. Uh, you can also go back and the idea of get now going, moving on to the reamp idea of reamping that is, you can, uh, if you say, for example, you recorded the guitar and the, uh, and the, and the, um, the amp, and then you play that back in a studio or in your room or in your garage or in your bathroom, who cares? It's up to you. And then you can take, put a, a couple of speakers in there. So you take that, that track, route those to the speakers out in the studio or out in your garage or whatever, and you record those and actually re-record them. So now all of a sudden you have the acoustics of the room. 
So you could have closer, uh, closer, um, a closer XY pair, six feet, a further distant 12, 16 feet, way up in the air, cross figure of eight bloom line. And now all of a sudden you have actual real room instead of reverb or artificial, you can use the real room. So there are all these options. Now, another tool that I use quite often is I will reamp in the box. That is uh, two things that I find. If you, if you happen to use Universal Audio's uh, Ocean Way, um, the uh, the reamp capabilities of of having Ocean Way, it is it is a an impulse response of Ocean Way LA, I believe, uh, the studio, and uh, and so you have a, an impulse response of that room, and it gives you basically a reamp sound in the box. It's quite amazing. Uh, for those of you who use Cubase, and I am a Nuendo user, uh, within, uh, within Cubase Nuendo, there is what is called uh, reverence. And within reverence, there are, for me, there are two settings. Um, well, actually one for, uh, for, for reamping. And that is, it's called LA Studio. And you can have that in stereo, or you can have it in four track for surround. And uh, LA Studio happens to be an impulse response of um, uh, East West in LA, another one of the classic large studios. So it becomes just an amazing way of reamping without having the microphones. So there are all these options. So I, I think, you know, what for, for those of you who are interested, which I hope you are, uh, uh, a, the idea of going to, uh, going back to modern recording techniques and reading through the idea of distant miking techniques, close miking techniques, um, accent miking techniques, reamping, all those things, and then going into the studio and playing with them and use the idea of adding dimension to your recordings, to the actual recordings themselves and stereo miking techniques, and of course, uh, to the recordings themselves, in addition to just the idea of what is considered to be conceptually stick the mic right in front and re press record. So I, I just really wanted to say that to you guys, get your, uh, get you to think about these things. And so this is, I'm going to be talking about some of this stuff, uh, and, uh, things in various ways and just some of the things that I do, um, which I'm just so non-typical. I'm so non-normal in so many ways uh, with uh, with the uh, with the way that I work. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have any interest, uh, the uh, my music can be found at again davidmileshuber.com, or you go to davidmileshuber.bandcamp.com for the uh, stuff on Bandcamp. So that's very very cool. Uh, I'm a you know we'll talk. I've talked about Bandcamp many many times. I can talk without end on, on Bandcamp, learning about Patreon as well. So we'll, we'll talk about these things a little bit later. Um, all the best. Thank you so much for, uh, for watching the video and uh, hopefully I'll catch you uh, with another video. Thanks. Bye-bye.